Hi, I'm Leslie Short, owner of the Kava Group and host of Visibility Unlimited Spotlight, our video version of Visibility Unlimited, the podcast. You can catch us on YouTube or any of your listening stations, or you can follow us on uh, social media at the Kava Group. Today's conversation is the state of DEI, mm -hmm. diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I'm really looking forward to my conversation with Barbara Matos. Toos, toos. Matos. Barbara Matos. A colleague and a DEI expert. Barbara, please um, share with the audience a little bit about yourself because you've been in this game for our, um, way before it was a trend. Indeed. Hi, Leslie. Thank you so much for having me today. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to our conversation. So I started doing diversity 20 plus years ago. Before it was, as you said, trendy, before it was even a thing. I was doing it on the television side for networks. Mm -hmm. And we were tasked by the different advocacy groups to be more diverse. They finally were fighting to see themselves on camera, on television, on the screen. So all of the networks signed an agreement to do more diverse practices, be more inclusive. And there started sort of our trek down this road and what that meant, which none of us were really too sure of since it was new. But for us, it took a little of, you know, what works, what doesn't work, what it is, what is it that we need to, to make this happen. And on television, since the ask was, we want to see ourselves on television, it was how do we make programs or what type of programs do we do that will attract diverse talent so that Hollywood can no longer say we can't find them. And sure enough, we, we combined forces. We'd have regularly calls with the other networks. And ultimately, we came up with programs for writers, directors, and actors. And those programs this day, even though that's in my, in my review mirror now, are still the programs that are being used. And it did. It opened up a pool of talent that prior to that wasn't being accessed. I mean, I was on, so I was the creator, co-creator, and architect of all those programs at CBS. I worked with advocacy groups. I did out outreach to make sure we were doing the things that needed to be done. I created internal programs for our employees. I uh, led our employee resource groups, and um, which really helped sort of the internal process for diversity. 20 years later, here we are. and. <laughs> I'm not, hoping, much changed. <laughs> not much has changed, sadly, but I'm hoping that maybe now is the time that, that this is really going to happen. So thank you for that. So let's dive in. You spoke about pledges, so I'm going to just jump off. In the last week, we saw in Ad Week um, a article on moving DEI beyond the obvious. I'm not so sure people even know what the obvious is, but we'll get back to that. And then you saw where 49, there were hundreds of companies that took a pledge, 49 of them, brands, mm -hmm. advertising brands, have now backed out of that pledge. I have an issue with pledges because if you don't have a commitment, accountability, it, it, it goes out the window. So the first question, I have three for us to kick off. Okay. Where are we now? Uh, and that's a tough question, especially for someone who's been in, in this industry for so long, because you hope that 20 years later, we'd be much further along than we are. And sadly, I think where we are is aware, <laughs> sort of, kind of. You know, I think people understand that this is needs to happen, that it needs to be done. I mean, for years at, at my company, we would say it just makes business sense. It's not any other thing than it makes business sense. We, would, we hope that would make the thing that makes you sign on. Right. And it did, but it didn't. And right. now it's 2021. Again, I started this in 2000 and we're in 2021. And when I hear that some companies are just now doing that diversity thing, you, you have to wonder and be like, well, what were you guys doing till then? Till now, what happened? <laughs> well, so let's break this down for a second. Sorry to jump, but when you say the diversity thing, I think that's where we all get thrown off as well. This is so much bigger than a diversity thing. And let's, let's clarify diversity. For me, diversity is gender, race, LGBTQ+, um, 
disability sites seen and unseen in veterans. I know for most companies, when they think of diversity, they still think black or white. Hispanic will be thrown in, and Asian is a bonus. And God forbid, there's all the other cultures that have yet to truly be discussed. Right. Those were all the ones I see, but we also tackled age. Right. In the programs that we did at um, CVS. Mm-hmm. And I agree, it's all of that. And I, and I think the problem is that it's diversity, and there's some, se- seem, some seem to think it's a magic pill that we're going to take. And miraculously, diversity is going to be solved. And we've seen since, especially since last summer, a lot of companies put heads of diversity in place. That's lovely. <laughs> but then what? You know, no, equity, no equity, nothing. not a C-suite. Oh, and, and what's the plan? Because um, unfortunately, a DI leader alone does not make the change happen. I mean, Wait, it's I need you to say that again. Say that again so it's not me and my voice all the time. Say that one more time. <laughs> putting a DEI leader in place does not change me. I mean, there has to be a whole plan, a whole strategy. What then? Okay, we've put someone in place. Now what? Where are the resources? What does the team look like? But more importantly, it's do we really want to make the change? There you go, because it's a mind shift. Because yes. we, we can put about 15 people in place and you can hire all the black folks, Hispanic folks, disability, you can hire, you can do all of that. If from the fish's head, that would be leadership. Yes. From, the, from you know, the boardroom to the mail room, if there's not that investment, I always say that, then we're just going around in circles having the same conversation. We're, I, I don't want to dismiss your 20 something years, my 20 something years. Let's just look at this last year year we're still having the conversation on what diversity is we're still speaking that it's good business but what people keep missing and you tell me if you agree or not that we keep forgetting to speak about people stop adding all these letters diversity equity inclusion belonging yeah i mean when i started it was just deep I thought it was multicultural. (laughs) Diversity, and before it was over, I was diversity and inclusion. Then it was diversity, equity, and inclusion. And the truth is, you know, we can name it six hundred different things. But if we are not strategically making plans to change or deciding, I mean, at the end of the day, and it might sound a little hokey, but at the end of the day, we need to be the change. You know, a a, a CEO can't say, well, you go ahead and be the chief diversity officer, knock yourself out, I'm out. Then what? And or, you know, we're doing good enough, so we'll just put a head there and then, no, you have to finally acknowledge that where we are has changed, that we need to do better, and you need to see your company do better. And until each of us does that, starting with our senior level executives, this is not going to change. Because we keep seeing more of the same. Right. And that's where we are now. We keep seeing more of the same in regards to promises, promises, promising, intent without action, very little action, not budget. There's still not C-suite. There is a reason why there has been mass mass exodus of all these chief heads of whatever you want to call them a diversity because you have not given them. So then the second question is, where should we be? <laughs> no, I, like, I, I, you know, you have clients, I have clients, we've seen people do some good work. It's just the beginning of the good work. But yet we still have people that still calling me from when they called me a year ago, talking about they're still having discussions on what they should do. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, since I left CBS, I can't tell you how many recruiters I've gotten for DEI leadership. I'm like, what were we doing? Why are you just now putting a... a leader of DNI in place. So I think we have to acknowledge that we, we're we here. This, this is not a, a made up thing. Diversity is in fact who we are. We're black, Latino, white, Asian, Native American, everybody. And we're not going anywhere as much as some might want some of us to go somewhere. We're not. Here we are. Right. So it is what it is. The thing is, what's the action now? What are we going to do to make our corporations, our places of business, our agencies, the damn Olympics, inclusive, equitable. Because at the end of the day, and and I can't tell you how many times I've been in rooms where I have to think, 
no, no, no one's looking for a handout. We just want it to be fair. But we, we have to have a conversation. Right. And the conversation has to be on both parts. Right. It has to be on both parts. I don't want someone assuming right. they know what is best. But yet, when we have the opportunity, and I'm going to say we of those of color, disabilities, all, all whatever is under this lovely big diversity umbrella, we also need to speak up and be clear on what is needed, what's wanted, and how help build where it needs to go. I hear everyone saying they're tired of telling people what they want or need, but the opposite is we're running around a track and nothing's getting done. We're talking a lot. <laughs> We're a lot talking. Everybody's talking and going back to the, the agencies that now almost half or less, more than half, have withdrawn from the pledge. Yeah, because it's nice to say, oh, this is what we're going to do. But when it comes down to doing the work, no one really wants to do the work and nothing's going to come from just saying, oh, yeah, we want to do this. People have to commit, have real conversations with the folks in it. It's lovely to bring external people in and fix our problem, but why don't we have internal conversations to see where the problems lay, how they can be improved? And I'm not saying don't bring them in because it both is necessary, but at least start the conversations with your folks. But let's have let's let's double edge that because let's be honest, some people don't have the capacity to have those conversations. And so they do more harm. I don't, we don't all need to tell our personal story and then can't get past that. And that's what we saw a lot of. I'm not saying that's bad. That's great. You started somewhere, but at the end of the day, you need to come in and have that evaluation. You need to come in and, and be able to uh, trust the person you bring in to open up those books and see behind, you know, that, that magical curtain it doesn't have any magical answers <laughs> because this is about company culture. If your culture is not built on anything past a ping pong table and free beer and, 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 and coffee, how are you, how are you building one top of a foundation that is not strong? You can't do DEI without examining your, your culture and being with the cracks. Right. And, and to what you're saying, absolutely. But I think what happens is that folks think, oh, but we're not really broken. Our business has been working fine. Maybe we don't check all the boxes, but for the most part, we're successful. And my thought is, for now, <laughs> right. because it's going to get, you know, the world is changing. Our country's changing. We are more diverse here. There's a more of all of us here. So while what worked for you 20 years ago worked, it's not going to work in another five years. And then you're going to find yourself in a place where, oh, now what? And why? When you can fix this, you can do the work, do the homework. And once you get started, it's not really, you know, earth shattering. It's just a matter of really wanting to see that culture, that corporate culture change. And well, when you, go ahead. Sorry, it, it, it's so clear for you. Here's why it's earth shattering to some people. <laughs> you, you, we've had this discussion. It is to some people. But. For some people because you have to examine yourself. Yes. What is your added value to this conversation as a leader to continue to grow and build this, to stand in your righteousness for someone else to stand in theirs and don't feel that somebody else is taking something away from you and, and your butts. Yep, goes back to what I was saying. And I'm gonna actually borrow from my friend and colleague, Leslie Short. You have to know what's in your bag. Because that's just it. You can show up and be like, oh, yes, I want a diverse company and I'm going to do this. And then be like, oh, not so much. Here's a, here's a little bit. Too diverse, too much. <laughs> here's a head, but don't, don't ruffle the waters too much. Don't rock the boat. And then what? Post. What yeah. more do you want? Right. So it is. It's exactly that. It's where are you personally, individually, and how does that affect your culture, your company? And then how do you reconcile the two so that you finally accept that adjusting, making these changes, having this conversation does not, in fact, take anything away from you. Right. Letting someone else have a place to have a voice to be heard does not lessen your voice or take anything away from you. And for the companies who have done it, 
who are getting it right, they've seen that it works infinitely better. Mm-hmm. And look, there's no such thing as perfect. There no. is not a checklist. Please stop asking. Uh, <laughs> it, no. is not, it is not magical. It's what you said. It's work. And everyone goes, well, what's the work? I'm like, you are the work. The work starts with you. And then the work starts with being able mm-hmm. to examine every single kind of department that you have and what's going on within. And then being able to have a place where your employees are comfortable enough to have a conversation. Yes. So you can mm-hmm. start to build and continue to work. Absolutely. You know, and I think people need to, companies need to realize that, brands need to realize that, people need to realize that if you're not um, going to be authentic and you doing the work and be committed. um, We're going to be here in another 20 years, in the same place. I I think back to when I was at at, at CBS and we did, for the first time, we started employee resource groups. Mm -hmm. CBS hadn't had them and we started them. And because I wasn't sure what the employees would respond to, you know, when you haven't had stuff, you sort of hesitate, like, wait, are they finding your stuff together? So I thought, let's start with a multicultural group. And that way we'll see what the interest is of having these groups. And if there's a bigger interest, it'll break out into more individualized groups. But what I found was, is that we're already so siloed that a multicultural group brought us together. And now we were having, Hispanic Heritage Month events and African Black History Month events and Asian Pacific American History Month and Women's History Month. And everybody was coming because it was the group for everyone. And some of the events that we had, people would come out and like, oh, I didn't know that. That was so great to learn. And I think, you know, it's not monumental, but today you learn something that you didn't know that sitting in your cube avoiding the folks you don't know, you wouldn't have gotten to know. And so for me, that was really awesome to see. Mm-hmm. And it, it's that you have to be able to sit with people you have not usually sit with, hear what everyone has to say, and then build that way. And be educated. You know, I, I'm the big one to say DEI is not the second event department. No. You know, and so there was a great thing that's out right now. Okay, here we're in July. We, we you know, we've had something to celebrate. Black History Month, Women's History Month, LGBT. Like we have gone Asian Pacific, like we've been, it's been nonstop. July, there's somebody who's like, oh, no, more, no, no more diversity events. Well, this is not an event firm. Right. And so you need to continue to educate and build on a foundation of equity. That's why I'm a big one. I don't want equality. I don't want what Johnny's making. Johnny may not be making enough for me. How dare you compare me to Johnny? I want the equity to know that I can continue to grow. I want the equity to know that I can come in here and know where our promotions are or who I can speak to, what my benefits are, those types of things. I want someone to know that my voice is valued. Yes, absolutely. You know, and I think until, you know, question number three is, so where are we going? And I think what... <laughs> That was a deep thought. <laughs> uh, where are we going? Ideally, we would hope that fast forward 10 years, we figured it out, that corporations, all of them are equitable, they're inclusive, and we've done it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say... Because I'm glad you started with equitable. I feel the same way, equitable. Because I think if you have that equity piece, the inclusion piece comes very tight with that. Absolutely. Because if we keep just looking at diversity to fill holes and do those check boxes, we really are going to stay in the same place. Yeah, so that we're going to keep talking to hear ourselves talk and we're not gonna change anything. I mean, I think of just in the last year, there was that frenzy to, we're all gonna be diverse, we're doing diverse things, but it's a year now, because now we're at a year. Mm -hmm. And you wanna hear that, oh, you know, this happened and this happened. And you don't want check-ins every day, don't tell us every day, you know, that you're changing college, not names from freshmen and 
and senior to first year and second year because at the really, I mean, I get it. They thought that was a thing. But right. when we're thinking about inclusion and equity, I'm almost positive no one was sitting home going, I don't want to be called a freshman no. or a senior. So, you know, thanks for the tribe, but that's not what we're talking about. So I'm hoping that as we move forward, where we're going in, that people will finally understand that these sort of fixes, these band-aids are merely just that band-aid. Right. And that if you want to make real change, that we really have to do the work. That there's no way around it. And again, the right people need to be at the table. Yes. And notice I said the right people. So what is that? Is it someone that's going to yes you because they're looking for a check? Or they're looking to get closer, they're looking for their promotion or what, you know, whether it's internal or external. It's got to be someone that says, I know that may be the direction you would like to go, but let me explain to you two other directions with context on why this may be a stronger direction. It may not be the popular direction, right. but it'd be most, the most beneficial direction for you. And so until someone can say that, People don't want to have the hard conversation. Some people I know want to do the work, but they still want to keep it light. Right. Well, and look, I could almost understand that because everybody wants to be secure, stable, but not worried about, oh, if I say the wrong thing, then I won't have a job. We get it. <laughs> no one wants to be broke or out of a job. But it doesn't have to be that dire, that drastic. You're sitting at the table, say nicely, you know what? I'm, this is what I'm hearing. Let's mm -hmm. What I'm hearing you say is this. Putting on my psycholo my psychology hat on. It says, right. What I'm hearing you say is this, but here's how I'm receiving it. And I think if you want to make a better message, then we should do this, this, and this. And I don't think anybody can be offended or think you're being out of place when you speak up that way. And that way they listen, they're hearing you, because sometimes really people genuinely think, or I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, that they think that they're saying all these great helpful things and we're going to put mentoring in place and we're going to give you this. And then you're sitting there going, oh, sounds like you're talking about giving people handouts when no one's asking for that. And just the language is so important because you don't want people to think that that's all you're doing because no one's asking for that. All we want is to be at the table, equal to everyone else, with an equal voice, so that when things are not right, we are free and, and without all this panic to speak up because that is the only way we create a better culture. But let's go back, Barbara. You've got to, you know, I don't, I'm always the one that goes, could care, less, could care less about being at a table. I could be in a corner. I just want a valid voice in the room. I don't need to sit down. I like, I'm, I'm good. Not, I can stand. We just need to be in the room where it's happening. Here you go. That's the point. If we're not in the room, if we don't, and, and even I was always someone, whether I was in the room or not, I had something to say. I'm going to find the person that I need to say it to. I understand for most people, I know for most people that is not the case. So we need not to be so excited being in the room, but be a valid educator within that room. If we are not educating and advocating and advocating for not only what you need personally, but for the betterment of advancement of growth of that project, of that moment of people, of company, it becomes a shambles. Because I know that there was one company, they said, but we had two different agencies, Leslie. I said, but did you question the agencies? Did you ask questions? Or you just said, Here's some black folks in this Black History Month and I'm cutting a check and they're figuring it out. And they didn't have the knowledge of your industry and or what they had to do and kept it moving. It's problematic. Absolutely. And to what you were saying, definitely have a voice in the room. And once you're in that room with the voice, then don't be afraid to use it, don't. Because I think, and I, I'm, I'm don't want to speak for an entire community or speak for in general, mm -hmm. but sometimes you're in the room and it's that mentality, well, I'm in the room. I don't want to ruffle the waters. No, no, you're in the room. It's sort of our duty to now, and again, no one's saying to wreak havoc, but it's, it's our duty almost to speak up now that we're in the room and just say, you know what, I think this works better or this hasn't worked mm -hmm. because we're not addressing X, Y, Z. And I think that that makes a huge difference. Yeah.
valid voice in the room is what I always say. And not speaking to hear yourself speak or so excited to be in that room. So what are all few takeaways you want to give people? I mean, I know we have long lists. Uh, we have our own list. Of. <laughs> but what's some of the takeaways we can, as everyone listens and they're like, oh, I like what they said. What I, think, do? I think one of the biggest takeaways is as individual, you have to decide that this is what you want to see so that you're, what's your part in it and how do you commit on your part mm -hmm. to make that? Because one at a time, eventually there's a collective and the voice is bigger and the voice is heard. So that for me is the biggest. If you want to see this change, then you have to commit to it. You have to decide that when given the opportunity, you are going to speak up. And then if you are a leader, you have to communicate that this change is important. And I think that's one of the biggest things. You decide that this change is important for your culture, for your company. You need to communicate that, listen, this is full-fledged ahead. This is a commitment. It's going to take a long time. It's not going to happen overnight. We're going to have these sessions. I don't call them trainings any longer. You can't you, you train an animal. You don't train a human being. You know, we're going to have sessions with outside people. They're going to help us guide to the work that we need to be doing. Everyone's not going to be on the, the same road at the same time of the process because that's human nature. But this is the road we're traveling down. Yes. And again, I can't repeat it enough because we've seen so much. That commitment can't be putting a head, a figurehead in place and then walking away. Right. That does not do the trick. It's exactly what you said. It's Yes, put the diversity person, if that's going to be the one at the helm to direct, to drive. The, but then what? Let, let's make sure we have strategies in places, that we have resources in places, mm -hmm. and that our folks hear from leadership, from the C-suite, that they are invested in this change, that they're invested in making the corporation better. Because that's all we're saying. This, this may be good, but it could be exceptional. And why not strive for that? Love that. I'm going to leave that right there, Barbara. That's That was perfect. Love having an opportunity to speak with you. Always here. great to speak with you, Leslie. Thank you again for having me. Absolutely. For everyone that's watching or listening, as always, continue to expand beyond your current culture.